Well, if you've been watching our show for any length of time, you know that a uh, big business runs Washington, D.C. That's right. They are bought what? and sold by, I know, you might be shocked to learn this. If you're new here, just be prepared to have your mind blown a little bit. Uh, they are bought and sold. When you elect a member of Congress or the Senate, they are bought and sold by corporate interests designed to do their bidding. I tweeted over the weekend that Republicans are likely to regain power very soon. President Biden is likely to lose this next election. And therefore, Republicans will be in power. But make, make no mistake about it, both parties are corrupt, right? They are run by corporate lobbyists. That's it. We've known that for years. Um, that when you elect a, a member of Congress, they don't vote for your interests at all. You wonder, like, why don't they vote for my interests? You know, I just elected that person. They vote f in favor of what the lobbyists want. They're literally, literally bought and sold. Well, now Alabama Congressman Mo Brooks uh, was the victim of a hidden camera uh, during a recent private speech over the weekend. During the speech, Mo Brooks told supporters that there is a system of corruption which actually prevents Congress from passing legislation that would actually benefit the average American. This is the way the system, he just let the cat out of the bag to this private group. Brooks said that both parties charge their members $1 million and beyond to be placed as a chairman on committees in Congress. And then only those who take donations from lobbyists can afford to buy the seats. He said special interest groups run Washington, and he said, I don't mean that metaphorically. He said, I mean it literally. So li <laughs> You're not supposed to say that, but it's true. So listen to some of this hidden camera footage. This is Mo Brooks with a hidden camera telling the truth. Sure, that y'all are very much concerned about why our Congress is so unresponsive to the regular needs of American citizens. Why some of these policies that come out are so bizarre, so unfair, so skewered against regular Jane and Joe citizens. The reason is simple. Special interest groups run Washington. And I don't mean that metaphorically, I mean literally. Now, here is how it happens. In the House of Representatives, I'll use that as an example because that's where I work. If you want to be chairman of a major committee, you have to purchase it. And the purchase price for a major committee, say like Ways and Means, minimum bid is a million dollars. Now I'm, I'm talking literally here. I'm not talking metaphorically, okay? We have committees broken down by A group, B group, and C group. C are the cheapest, B are the most expensive, uh, are middling, a is the most expensive. It's the most expensive because those are the committees that the special interest groups care the most about. So where does a congressman come up with a million dollars to be chairman of one of these A committees? You can't get it from Joe and Jane Citizen because Joe and Jane Citizen back home, they're not going to be contributing that kind of money. They don't have it. They need that money for their own families, okay? So, let me finish, let me finish. And so, you have to get it from the special interest groups. And with the special interest groups, there is a quid pro quo. If you don't do what they tell you to do, they won't give you the money that finances your chairmanship. I had one guy who ran for chairman of the NRCC, which is where the Republicans pay their money for these committee assignments and chairmanships, just as the Democrats pay theirs to the DCCC. And this guy who wanted to be chair of the NRCC actually had a brochure. And that brochure had price listings written on it. And his, his argument for getting elected was, elect me, I will charge you less. Can you believe that shit? Yes, like, I can. He has brochure. He knows how the game is played, this guy running. So he has brochures printed up that say, hey, elect me. I, you know, I will do your bidding for you for this chairmanship, but I just won't charge you as much as the, like the other guys will so that you will buy me. You will buy my vote and I will go to I will chair this committee. OK, N meanwhile, he's a <laughs> member of Congress. So he's a member of Congress already. But to get on this chairmanship spot, he then has to be paid 
by these special interests and then f- then funnel it to the the committee spots. That's how this works. Well, in the book Republic Lost by law professor Lawrence Lessig, who did run for president specifically just to kill out this culture of lobbyists defending or paying into elected representatives to get their way, um, he points out that, let's say, a freshman c- congressman there or a congresswoman, their starting salary is in the two and three hundred dollars per year range, which sounds like a lot. It absolutely is for the average worker. But when you think about how much it costs to live and work in Washington, D.C., it actually isn't that much. Plus, they have to live and work in their elected district as well. And so a lot of times they do a full year, right, their first full term, and then realize, you know what, I could leave and be a lobbyist and make three times that much. A starting salary for a good lobbyist is in the seven hundred thousand dollar per year range, and then they realize I can represent, I can still have access to all the same people that I knew when I was serving, and I can make a whole lot more money, and I can represent special interests. That's why they do it, right? It's a simple game of numbers. Yeah. Well, also like like getting if you're if you uh, become a lobbyist, you actually get to write laws rather than just vote. Sure. On. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean. And, you know, he he admits, you know, and I wonder I mean, he's running, you know, he's got uh, he's got the endorsement of Rand Paul right now. And others like, you know, how do you win? He's going to be a rare voice. He's certainly not going to get a chairmanship. Um, and it's like you don't say this stuff. You just don't say this stuff out out in public. Like, what's his name? But if it's a simple bidding game, right? And someone says, hey, you know, I will represent your interest for X amount of dollars. Then you think about paying elected representatives X amount of dollars so that they don't do this. It's a hard pill to swallow because Congress is so odious. So nobody wants them to have higher salaries. But at the same time, when you look at a country like Singapore that has the highest salaries for politicians and has zero corruption, right? Right. So it is interesting because, as he points out, those that can't afford to cough up a million dollars in donations take donations from these special interest groups so should we should we want our politicians to be wealthy should we want them i mean traditionally that's kind of how they've been in the past anyway they've been wealthy yeah. landowners right right so at the you know the, at the beginning of the united states so uh, but he as he points out this is how public policy has become so corrupted and this is what happens too is that someone who's not upwardly mobile who then becomes you know becomes like the star and becomes a congressperson then they start to they start to you know the money right because if they want to get some power if they want to get committee ships if they want to get on these different chairs they're going to have to otherwise they have no power they're in they're in congress but they don't get to vote they're not on any committees they don't get any laws written no they they only have a vote and and if they don't toe the party line by the way they get kicked off committees this is you know this is what happens when you start to see people like AOC or, uh, you know, other people who want to, you know, rise up and then they're going to get threatened by getting kicked off of committees. This is what happens. Yes. Yeah. And this is certainly what happened with Liz Cheney, right? She speaks out against something. She gets yanked off of committees, almost gets stripped of all of her power. So then why is she even there? Right. 